Bhagavatam class ki jai. It's a wonderful thing that Prabhupada started and amazing that it goes on. Although I heard in America some temples don't have anymore. They say nobody comes. Everybody's doing it online or some 
from some other country. But better to be all together and wherever we are. So today we have 10th Canto, chapter 55, text 2 through 8. So I'll just read the uh, first ones. And then we'll do number eight all together. Sa eva jato vai darbyam Krishna virya samudbhava Prajumna itti vakyata Sarvato navama pitu He took birth in the womb of Vaidarbi from the seed of Lord Krishna and received the name Pradyumna. In no respect was he inferior to his father. Tam Sambara Kama Rupi Ritva Tokam Anir Disham Sa vidvatmana shatrum prasyod vat yagad griham. The demon Shambara, who could assume any form he desired, kidnapped the infant before he was even ten days old. Understanding Pradyumna to be his enemy, Shambara threw him into the sea and returned home. Tam Nirjagara Balavan Mina Sopya Parai Saha Vrito Jalena Mahata Krihito Matsya Jiva Bi A powerful fish swallowed Prajumna, and this fish, along with others, was caught in a huge net and seized by the fishermen. Tam Shambharaya Kaivarta Upajarur Upayanam Sudha Mahana Samitva Vajyan Sudit and Bhutam. The fishermen presented that extraordinary fish to Shambhara, who had his cooks bring it to the kitchen, and when they began cutting it up with a butcher knife. Drishtva Tad udare balam Maya bhajai navedayan Narado kat yavat sarvam Tasya shankita chetasa Balasya tatvam utpatim Matsyo Dada Niveshanam. Seeing a male child, seeing a male child in the belly of the fish, the cooks gave the infant to Mayavati, who was astonished. Narada Muni then appeared and explained to her everything about the child's birth and his entering the fish's abdomen. Sacha Kamas Chabai Padmi Padni Padni Ratir Nama Yashasvini Prachur Nirda Da Dehasya Dehot Patim Patikshati 
Nirupita Sambarena Sa Sudor Dana Sadane Kama Devam Shishumbudva Chakre Sneham Tadarbake Mayavati was in fact Cupid's renowned wife Rati. While waiting for her husband to obtain a new body, his previous one having been burned up, she had been assigned by Shambhara to prepare vegetables and rice. Mayavati understood that this infant was actually Kamadeva, and thus she began to feel love for him. We can chant that verse a few times. Sacha Kama Syavoy Patni Ratir Nama Yashasvini Pat your Nirgat Da Dehasya Dehot Patim Patikshati Nirupita Sambarena Sasudor Dana Sadane Kamadevam Shishun Budva Chakre Sneham Tadarbake Kailas Sachakama Shavoy Patni Ratir Nama Yashashvini Pachur Nirgada Dehasya Dehot Patim Shati Nirupita Shambarena Nirupita Shambarena Sasudor Bana Sadhane Kamadevam Shishun Budva Chakrar Sneham Tadarbake Nasya Voy Patni Ratir Nama Yashashvini Ratir Nirdagda Dehasya Dehat Patim Pratikshati Nirupita Sambarena Sasudardana Sadane Kamadevam Shishun Budva Chakre Sneham Tadarbake Ratir Nama Yashashini Vagra Dehasya Dehot Patim Pratikshati Kambarena Sat Sudarvdana Sadane Kamadevam Shishun Budva Chakre Sneham Tadarbake Sakama Shavoy Patni Ratir Nama Rishashvini Prachur Nirdagda Dehasya Deho Patim Pratikshati Nirupita Sambarena Sadane Kamadevam Shishun Budva Chakre Sneham Tadarbake Ratir Nama Vishashvini Dehot Patim Vishikshati 
Rupita Sambarena. Nirupita Sambarena. Sudardana Sadhane. Kamadevam Shishun Budva. Chakre Sneham Sadarbake. Chakamasya Boy Patni. Dear Nama Yashashvini, Patur Yugata Dehasya, Patim Nepriksati, Tad Vambarena, Sasudardana Samani, Chakre Sneham Tadarbake, ladies. Sachakama Shaboy Patni. Ratir Nama Yashasvini. Churnir Dagda Dehasya. Dehot Patim Patikshati. Nirupita Sambarena Sasudurdana Sadhane Kamadevam Shishun Budva Chakre Sneham Tadarbake Namasya Dvoipatni Ratir Nama Yashasvini Prachur Nir Dagda Dehasya Dehot Patim Pratikshati Narupita Sambarena Sasadagana Sadhane Kamadevam Shishun Budva Chakre Sneham Tadarbake. Very good. Sa. Sa. She. she. Cha. Cha. And. Kamasya. Cupid. Vai. In fact. Patni. The wife. Rati Nama. Named Rati. Yashashvini. Famous. Prachu of her husband. Near Dagda, burnt to ashes. Dehasya, whose body. Deha, of a body. Upatim, the attainment. Patikshati, waiting. Nirupita, appointed. Sambarena by Shambara. Sa, she, Suda Odana of vegetables and rice. Sadhane in the preparation. Kamadevam as Cupid. Shishun, the infant. Budva, understanding. Chakra, she developed. Sneham, love. Tada, then. I just, I just touched the wrong corner there. Anubake, for the child. Mayavati was in fact Cupid's renowned wife, Rati, while waiting for her husband to obtain a new body, his previous one having been burned up. She had been assigned by Shambhara to prepare vegetables and rice. Mayavati understood that this infant was actually Kamadev, and she began to feel love for him. Purport by the disciples of Srila Prabhupada. Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur 
explains this story as follows. When Cupid's body was burned to ashes, Rati worshipped Lord Shiva to obtain another body for Cupid. Shambhara, having also come to Shiva for a benediction, was recognized by the Lord first, who told him, you should now ask for your benediction. Shambhara, struck with lust at seeing Rati, replied that he wanted her as his benediction. And Shiva replied, Shiva complied. Lord Shiva then consoled the sobbing Rati, telling her, go with him, and in this way, very home, you will attain what you desire. Thereupon, Rati bewildered Shambhara with her deluding power, and taking the name Mayavati, remained in his house untouched. Om Ajnana Timirandasya Ganangana Shalakaya Chaksura Militanyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Manobhistam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Shri Mati Bhakti Vedanta Swaminiti Namane Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharane Nirvisesha Shunyavadi Paschacha De Satarane Vansha Kalpa Turubhyascha Kripa Sindhu Vyevacha Patitanam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavebhyo Namonamaha Namo Mahabharanaya, Krishna Prema Pradayate, Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya, Namani Gora Tushe Namaha. Panchatatmakam, Krishna Bhakta Rupa Sarupakam, Bhaktavataram Bhaktakyam, Namami Bhakti Shaktikam. Hey Krishna, Karuna Sindhu, Dina Bandhu, Jagatpate, Gopesha Gopika Kanta, Radha Kanta Namostate. Jayatam Sudatopangor, Mama Manda Matergati, Matsarvasya Padambojo, Shishi Radha Madana Mohano. Vrindavanya Jumado, Shimadrat Nagara Singhasanisto, Shishi Radha Srila Govinda Devo, Prestali V. Savyamano Smarami. Okay, so little. I always don't know what to say in these big temples with so many devotees present. So if everybody has a strong desire, Krishna can speak through me something that might help us all in Krishna consciousness. That's our real purpose in life. Uh, so we're very fortunate that Srila Prabhupada created this society and then made these temples and every year we can understand more and more how Prabhupada was empowered a visionary this temple even he thought maybe it's too far away nobody will come what to speak of Mayapur and Bhubaneswar what to speak of America or something that, or Russia but now there's so many temples, so many devotees everywhere. <clears throat> but we're only beginning. Uh, so many books are distributed, but uh, compared to nonsense books and things, it's nothing. Very small numbers, but much more significant. So this Leela, you know, it's definitely about reincarnation, if you want to call it reincarnation, um, changing bodies. Without, it's not like just saying, it's giving examples. Of course, in the Bhagavatam, we have many examples like that. There was such a vati, the uh, wife of, in the Kuru dynasty, and she had also been swallowed by a fish, and then 
King of the Fishermen founder, and then she became the mother of Vyastev. She was actually a princess, but right when she was born, some fish ate her somehow or other. So these things happen. Uh, many people might not believe it, but they all believe that Jonah was swallowed by a whale, if they know the Bible. And no, some, I read somebody said it's impossible. The whale doesn't have a big enough throat to swallow a man. But there's different kinds of whales. <laughs> so anyway, uh, anything can happen. You know, any life is a miracle. So in this case, it was Shiva's involved with his benedictions. And Shambhara, he came, who knows what his original intention was, what he was going to ask for, but when he saw Rati, who is, you know, equally as attractive as Cupid, or more, since she's a woman, he got bewildered and all he could say is he want her. But then Shiva benedicted him, he have to, that's his nature, Asutosh. He's easily pleased, but he's also easily disturbed. So then she got, and Shiva had burned up the body of Cupid in the first place because he was trying to disturb him. But then it's all, you know, then he becomes a son of Krishna. Now, that even the son of Krishna could be kidnapped right out of the nursery, right? How can that happen? You would think they would have some kind of security. But by mystic power, they can do these things. You know, it's not like somebody had to come in with guns and kill the guards and something and take the child and just uh, take him, whoever it was. So. Uh, so Rukmini, that's the first child of Rukmini and Krishna. And he, ten years after ten days, he disappeared. And then it, it says here we can read more, but he grew up very fast. And Rati knew right away this child was, because uh, the cooks at least they, they. They found this baby alive in the belly of a fish. They didn't kill it. They, you know, they were not that degraded. They gave the baby to her to take care of. And then she recognized right away, this is her husband that she's been waiting for. So uh, changing bodies. It's a basic principle of Bhagavad Gita and of any spiritual understanding. We're not this body. Mostly everybody's identifying with the body. The Prabhupada stressed so much. You know, you're not, well, mostly he said Indian or American or something. Now we, you know, we have so many other designations in our movement, so many other illusory ideas, false egos, but it's all the same thing that we think we're the body. And the body's and, and so there's wars going on over different color bodies, different languages, different religions, because people uh, don't have any spiritual awareness. So we have Lord Chaitanya, Prabhupada was stressing, I heard many lectures lately, I was listening to the very early Bhagavad Gita lectures from New York and stuff. That was another interesting time because he was giving very basic Bhagavad Gita lectures, introduction to Bhagavad Gita, and he was also speaking on Sanatan Shiksha in 1966. You know, the topmost teachings of the Chaitanya Tartamrita. But he was like, over and over again saying, you're not the body, you're not American, you're not this, you're not that. And most, of course, the audience was mostly so-called Americans but, you know, I was young at the time, and I remember in school, uh, we all just thought, I'm American. Although so many of us, at least our grandparents, came from other countries. 
and we didn't identify with that at all. Now people are more hung up with their lineage or their ancestry or their, you know, whatever, I am this, I am that, trying to find out where I came from. So that, that's a good question, but it's a spiritual where it come from, come from Krishna. People ask us when we're traveling all the time, where are you from? So I say, from Krishna. In India, they no, but where are you born? Where are you from? You know, I'm from Krishna, same as you. Most of them catch on. Other countries, you get a chance to tell them who is Krishna, you know, is God, and we all come from God, right? Actually, practically nobody will deny that. But it's, we're still interested in, you know, what's your birth? And one of my god brothers, uh, Chitraka Prabhu, I knew him in Los Angeles. I never knew he was from Greece. Never thought to talk about that. You know, we were all just devotees. <laughs> I only found out he was from Greece like 10 years ago or 20 years ago or so, when I needed him to set up the Dandabats. But, you know, he's living in Greece. I, living in Italy, actually, and and making all these web pages in many languages. But we never thought about it, you know. I don't know who else, but... So we're all servants of Krishna. Jivara Swarupoy, Nichara Krishna Das. That's our... Someone was asking me just a few days ago about the Siddha Deha, and, you know, traditional Vaishnavism, and why don't we have that in ISKCON, and, and we have. We're all servants of Krishna. It doesn't matter what, you know, even in the spiritual world, you know, what type of particular form you have. You're a servant of Krishna. That's all anybody wants to be. The trees, the cows, the birds, the bumblebees, the gopis, the coward boys. Everybody's servant of Krishna. That's how they think of themselves. And if we're all thinking like that, then we could be a very powerful society, we could be very happy. We are already, but the more we think like that, the more everything can be nice. But Krishna, uh, Prabhupada said, he, he said at the end, you know, Sarva Dharma Purichaga, surrender to me. He didn't say it right away because that would scare people away. So he had all the other things in the Bhagavad Gita, the karma yoga, gana yoga, this yoga, that yoga, all the modes of nature, all very important things to help us to get out of it. But then the essence is manmana bhava madbhakto, become my devotee, think of me, worship me, bow down, bow down, mister, you know, to Krishna. And then sarva dharma prachita, give up all religious activities, which means doing all these rituals and all kinds of things for material gain. That, like Madhavendra Puri said, goodbye morning bath, goodbye this, goodbye that. I don't have time for you anymore. I'm just serving Krishna, just worshiping Krishna. So forget all this other stuff. I'm just going to get everything is just for serving Krishna. It doesn't mean you don't do anything. You have, if you give up everything but don't serve Krishna, then you're in trouble. A lot of people want to do that. For, yeah. But Lord Chaitanya said right away, surrender to Krishna. Hari Nama, Hari Nama, Yiva Kebalam. Everybody can say that? At least make something useful. Hari Nama, come on. Kalua Nasteva, Nasteva, Nasteva. Gatir Anyata. How many really believe that? That there's no other way? You really believe it? And so the Bhagavatam says, I don't know what exactly the verse in the first canto, Shrama Evi Kevalam, everything else, we say Harinam Evi Kevalam, and the Bhagavatam says, you know, about other things, Shrama Evi Kevalam. It's all a useless waste of time. Any other effort for anything for, because it's not bringing you to closer to Krishna. But Harinami Evakevalam, 
There's no political solution. Even the rock and roll singers knew that. I saw a long time ago. That was the title of an album or something. There's no political solution. There's no, you know, that we, we can see throughout history. There's been so many changes of kings, so many changes of types of government, so many revolutions. But the same birth, death, disease is going on, same anxiety, just increasing, increasing in intensity. There were always mentally ill people. Now there's much more. There were always, you know, criminals, always lots of diseases, but increasing because Kali Yuga. The Kali Yuga is glorified by the sages because in Kali Yuga, Kirtanadeva Krishna Sya Mukta Sangha Parambhajit. Although it's so bad, uh, it's really great because the spiritual advancement is simplified. None of us could do, you know, the, I was reading the Bhagavatam recently and how the yogi has to move the life airs up and then go out the top of his head. And it's a huge process and re requires absolute, you know, solitude somewhere and, well, it was hundreds of years of practice and and then even then, they may be thinking, you know, to go to Vaikuntha, but it says uh, they have to travel past all the heavenly planets. And they might think, well, let's stop there for a while. It looks nice. They forget. But for the devotee, that's what after Krishna describes in, in chapter 8 also to Arjuna, you know, leaving in the dark or in the day or the this and that, different kinds of things. and. Bhishma was waiting for the right time. He had the ability to do that. But he was showing, you know, how for normal people, you want to leave at a certain time. But he said, you don't have to worry. You know, a devotee doesn't have to worry. As long as you can remember Krishna. And Krishna promises if we try to remember him in this life, regularly, day by day, he'll make sure that we remember him because from Krishna comes remembrance, forgetfulness, and knowledge. Why would Krishna give forgetfulness? Because we want it. We want to forget Krishna. It's not easy. Uh, we've seen that with devotees who leave the movement. They can't really forget. And Krishna will come back. One story I heard, one devotee, he was a book distributor in America. So they, they had, for a while, the book distributors would say, I'll sign the book for you, like something special. Then he left, and I guess he was trying to forget Krishna, and he was hitchhiking across America, you know, on the highway. They don't do that anymore. But in those days, a lot of devotees did that. Like Narayani Maharaji, Somebody told him to go start a temple in another state, and she and her husband hitchhiked. They didn't have any money, but they hitchhiked somewhere and started the temple. You know, the good old days. So anyway, he got a ride, and they started talking about yoga or something, and the driver said, there's a book in my box there, a spiritual book. So he took it out. It was Bhagavad Gita as it is. He opened up, and his signature was in it. So he said, all right, and he went back and started distributing books again. <laughs> but you can't get away. Devotees would go to the movies, and the, and the movie would be the devotees chanting. Or something. These things happen. So we shouldn't try to get away. We should try to get to Krishna. So Prabhupada has given us all facility, sadhu sangha, the most important thing, sadhu sangha, that means getting together and chanting, doing some kind of service, hearing Srimad Bhagavatam, worshiping the deities, cooking, unlimited different types of ways you can serve Krishna and serve devotees. Krishna is more pleased when we serve devotees. Vaishnava Seva Nama Sankirtan, Lord Chaitanya. Dui Pabe Shigra, 
He said, just by these two things, Vaishnava Seva first and Nama Sankirtan, do we probably, Shigra means very quick. Shri Krishna Charan. My god brother, Sridhar Shida, Swami, when he was fundraising, he would say, Subhata Shigram. If it's auspicious, do it right away. In other words, don't, don't think about it, just give a donation. He was very effective because he was humorous and jolly. He wasn't pushing anybody, he was just telling the facts. So do it, don't hesitate. This is advice anybody gives business people. Any, if you want to start a business, do it. If you want to m make spiritual advancement, just do it. If you want to do some service, just do it. And Krishna will always help us. So we see how so many devotees are here for 50 or more years and doing more service and more and more and more. How the movement is growing uh, quite inconceivably. Especially when we come here, we can see it. Well, my poor is the same way now. It's always busy. Bus loads of people are coming from Mongol Arti. And, you know, Janani Bas is here now. I can tell you, when he first went there, nobody ever came. <laughs> nobody. Even devotees hardly came. But now, you know, they're just flooding in there from all sides. Every boat from Navadweep, you know, and all the people put on Tilak and they all come into Mayapur. And they're all buying sets of books. And so this is Prabhupada's power and it's there for all of us. You can even use me. Uh, that's proof, like St. Francis of Assisi said, if God can use me, he can use anybody. So in other words, don't think I can't do it. Anyone can do it. Anyone can serve Krishna. That's what we preach. We don't discriminate like Lord Nityananda, like the Panchatattva. They didn't think about when to, when to preach or where to preach or who to preach to. They just preach. They just spread the holy name. Hari Nama, Hari Nama, Hari Nama, Eva Kevalam. There's no other way. You know, we, all these wars and all these political adjustments and you know, isms and this and that, and they're not doing anything. They all, you know, everything they try to do, uh, you know, to think they're going to make it better. I just saw someplace, they had so many solar panels, like huge numbers of them. And there was a big hailstorm and broke all of them. And they're full of really toxic chemicals and it's all going in the groundwater. And, you know, so all these efforts that we're going to save the world, electric car or whatever, no, it's never going to change until people chant Hare Krishna, until people are reading Srimad Bhagavatam. And, and Prabhupada, that, you know, he just made that happen. Now there's so many, but there should be so many more. So thank you for tolerating. I won't try to go over time. It's very simple, you know, Hari Nama, Hari Nama, Hari Nama, Evi Kevalam. Kaluana Steva Na Steva Na Steva, Gatir Anyata. You know, I deal with many new devotees, uh, younger devotees, and so we're in the Navadri Prikama and in the night we're taking questions. We always get these questions, well, how can I give up my lusty desires? Oh, I'm overwhelmed by my, I was very sinful before and I keep remembering it. Yeah, this is what happens. Clear it out, just keep chanting. And associate with devotees who are, you know, moving forward, who are not looking back. Look ahead. It's like to say that on the old ships, you know, somebody had to climb really high up to look, right? So like a new guy's climbing up and halfway up he looks down and he freezes. And then everybody shouts, look up, look up, look up, you know. And then just keep climbing. Otherwise you get scared, it's so far down. What if I fall, what if this, what if that? No, just look ahead. 
just chant the holy name, attend all the, you follow the morning program. There's one ad coming up on the, I see on the internet quite often. It says four books to change your life. One of them is called The Morning Routine. Right? That's our main thing to change your life. <laughs> Stick to it. Get up early, chant like, like Panchagoda Prabhu. He's always at the Samadhi Arti. He's always at the class. This is really amazing for a temple president. Congratulations. And it's a very good example for everybody. You can see that he's still serving very dynamically after so many years. And this is, you know, like probably the most difficult temple in the world to be the president of. And look at the size of what's going on here. How many people, how many, depart how many departments you have? 40 departments. Almost 40. They don't even know. <laughs> so, and that means <laughs> so many people. And it's still somehow going on. Everything is going on. So, but, and if you go to Los Angeles, you know, Savas, he's up every morning like 2.30 or something, finishes rounds, Mangal Arte, and he back for, does his, takes care of his health and back for class every day. And that temple goes the best in America. So that's, that's for all of us, individually, whatever, you know, just do it. You may not feel like it. That's when you make progress is when you don't feel like it and you do it anyway. <laughs> Everybody knows that from if somebody's working out or practicing anything. So just sadhana means practice and just do it. And sadhu sangha, sadhu sangha, sarva shastri koi. All the scriptures are delaring. Love a matra, one eleventh of a moment of a second. That's like really fast. And uh, Sarva City Hoy, it's the best of all perfections. So we'll leave time for comments, uh, corrections, and reflections, questions. Thank you for coming. I know there's so much else going on around here. Right? Yeah. So the ch oh, only way is chanting the holy name and it's just as powerful in other ages. So why do people take difficult other processes? Why not just, just the holy name in any age, any time? Why in Sati Yuga is this, and Treta Yuga is that, and Dwapra Yuga is this, and the holy the name is the holy God name? God made it, you know, right? That's the way God made it. In the other ages, there were people, like I read in Ramayana, when Rama would go to these ashrams, there were people that were simply chanting the name of God. But not everybody, you know, like even now, not everybody wants to do that. But, and they were capable of doing other processes. But I think it would culminate in just chanting the holy name. But in this age, you can't do any of the other things. You know, how long can you even just sit up straight, you know, what to speak of, you know, focusing all your attention on the money poor chakra and then raising your life airs up and blowing it out the top of your head, and, you know, meanwhile, you know, never cutting your fingernails or your hair and having bugs crawling all over you and snakes crawling all around you and wild animals, you know, and nobody can do that kind of yoga. They can imitate it, but chanting the holy name, I think that culmination of those other things, for those who are really serious, that's my... But for Kali Yuga, this is the process that's given, and it's special mercy, because it's any time, any place, anybody, nam nam akadi bahuda nijasarva shakti, Tarpita niyamata smarnena kalaha itadasi tabakripa bhagavan mamapi dudaiva midrishami hajani nanuraja. Right? That there's no hard and fast rules. Because the other processes, uh, there are hard and fast rules. You have to be in a certain place and you have to do it at a certain time. 
you know, you have to have an astrologer who can actually calculate the right time and the right place you should be. And, and then you have to do it perfectly. And you have to pronounce the mantras perfectly. And one little syllable wrong and you'll get a different result. But the holy name is not exactly a mantra like other mantras. It's the holy name. So Krishna knows. So even if we can't pronounce it properly, I don't know if any of us can. You know, there'd always be some Sanskrit scholar that say, no, that's, no, it's supposed to be, you know, they'll say something. And one guy once even told me, I tried to chant a Bhagavad Gita sloka, and I thought I was chanting it, you know, pretty much just like Prabhupada. And he was going, huh, what? And then he said, oh, Prabhupada had a Bengali accent. You know, he didn't know. Oh, those Bengalis, they eat eggplant, you know, they don't know. So. The, uh, but anyone can chant the holy name any place, any time, in any condition, even if you didn't have a bath or you didn't get up early, you can still chant. Don't think that, take advantage of that, but, you know, that, that's, we introduce it to everybody and we don't think about, you know, what their qualifications. But other processes, you know, you have to find qualified people and then they have to study for a long time. So Hari Nama Hari Nama Eva Kevalam Kaluna Steva Nasteva Nasteva Gatiranyata. One time in one temple I was in, there was some controversy. I was kind of in the middle of it. I was the cause of it. And the temple president didn't agree that everyone should go on Sankirtan. And he told Prabhupada, Prabhupada said, everyone should go. But Prabhupada also said, if you can't work out your, your disagreements, just chant. Sit down and chant, forget talking about it. But I find in some of the conflicts we have in the temples, the people that are the conflicting, they don't want to sit down and chant, no. First we have to get everything perfect, <laughs> then we can chant. But then you can't, it's impossible. But if you just sit down and chant, everything will become perfect. Thank you. Can I ask one more? Yeah. There are, we've heard there are four sampradayas in, in Vrindavan. We see many different sampradayas giving direction and guidance. How do we know which is the, the proper sampradaya for us, you know, emphasizing the holy name or the guru parampara? I just stick with Prabhupada, that's all I can say. You know, we, I don't think we should bother with it. Of course, there are specifically four mentioned, but then they have many branches, and, you know, we don't want to try to study. Lord Chaitanya took the essence out of the four main ones. You know, the Ramanuja and the, and the Sri Sampradaya and the Kumara Sampradaya. He took the f two things from each one and put them all into the Brahma Godia and we do all those things. We worship the deities eternal. We follow the example of the gopis in service to devotees. Defeat Mayavadi, you know. So many of these sampradayas are Mayavadi sampradayas. They, they're coming down in succession, but so safe to just stay with it, this Iskan branch of the Brahma Madhva Gaudiya Sampradaya. And that means, you know, we have to study Prabhupada's books. Prabhupada also stressed that so much in so many quotes. Everyone must study all the books, you know, every member of our society. Then we will not be blown around by the winds of all these Sampradaya. It's an interesting word. In Bali, you know, it's supposed so-called Hindu society. So some of the so-called traditional Hindus, they don't like Hare Krishna because we don't do all the expensive yagyas that they promote. So they started like a campaign. So they were putting on social media a lot, Hare Krishna's, Hare Krishna's, Hare Krishna. I told the devotees you should be happy, you should tell them thank you, you know, for all this advertising. They couldn't understand that. But, uh, but gradually, 
they stopped saying Hare Krishna. They caught on themselves. And they started saying the Sampradayas. But the Sampradayas meant the Hare Krishna, Sai Baba, you know, uh, science of self, all the different, you know, there's so many, uh, Ananda Margi and this and that, and transcendental meditation. Those are all Sampradayas. <laughs> they meant anything coming from India. Only their local to Hinduism was the real thing. But they quit chanting Hare Krishna. <laughs> And then every, nobody knew what a sampradaya was, so it didn't get anywhere. But, um, but we, have, you know, the Sri Sampradaya, okay, well, they're bona fide. But we see many people claiming to be representing them that aren't. And, of course, we see people claiming to represent Gaudiya also, even Iskan, that maybe not agreeing with everybody else. But stick with Prabhupada. You know, people, devotees will ask, like, well, can you go back to Godhead if you follow some other one? Maybe you can, but you can't go back to Prabhupada, which is, you know, uh, I think most of us want. I see most of the second generation devotees who speak a lot constantly, Prabhupada, Prabhupada, Prabhupada. You know, they want, they want that connection, you know, to that intimate connection with Lord Chaitanya and Krishna, Radha and Krishna. Huh? Hey, Shudi, another hero. On the point that you were asking, um, you know, Lord Chaitanya went to uh, South India and he met with the Tattvavadis, which are, which is the Madhava Sampradaya, which we come from, they're closest to yeah. us. But he asked the Tattvavadi Guru, what what is the best process for this age? And he said, well, we practice the Varnashram Dharma and we offer the result of our activities to Krishna. And Lord Chaitanya says, but in this age, the Shastras say that the chanting, hearing and chanting of the holy names is the most effective process. And the Quite long. We were just at the place where Lakshmi is doing her tapasya, and that's what Lord Chaitanya said. Why Lakshmi wants to join with Krishna, you know? So doesn't that mean that Krishna is superior to Narayan? So first he was saying, well, no, she's not unchaste because Krishna is Narayan, or Narayan is Krishna. And that wasn't the point. <laughs> Lord Chaitanya was just saying that. She wants to be with Krishna, even though she's always with Narayan. So she left, you know, the lotus feet of Narayan to do this tapasya. But she could never enter into the rasa dance because she, she can't worship Krishna in the way the gopis do, like chastising Krishna and, you know, she's all, all in reverence. Anyway, that's, in this day and age, and Lord Chaitanya made it very clear and with so many scriptures and ancient scriptures and everything. It's always a, an effective process chanting the holy names. And especially the Maha Mantra. That's in the Kali, you know, that's in the Kali Santara Upanishad. Lord Brahma, after studying the Vedas three times, concluded, you know, Iti Soda Sakam Nam Nam, right? Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare. Kali, Sank, you know, Nashanam. This is the best way to annihilate the anomalies of the Kali Yuga. So that's from the, you know, the oldest Upanishads. It's not a new thing, like, but in this age especially, uh, it's given in, in, for anyone and everyone. Even in Lord Chaitanya's time, the Brahmanas thought only born Brahmanas can chant the name of God. And they, their argument was, if these Mlechas and Yavanas and Sudras 
It'll contaminate the holy name. They were so stupid. But Lord Chaitanya was giving it to everybody. That's why they were not happy with him. So chant. Hare Krishna. Yeah, it is in Bhagavatam still it is stated that uh, uh, one who chants the holy name, he takes, has taken birth in all the holy rivers of India and has gone to all the places of pilgrimage. That was the system. The, the knowledge of the holy name was restricted. But when we say Lord Chaitanya broke the stores, opened the stores of love of God, that's what it means that he made the holy name available to everybody without restriction. So it's a, that Bhagavatam verse is there, but it, we're living in a different time. We're living in Lord Chaitanya and he's a, he's a game changer. He changed the whole thing around. Now the holy name is available to everybody freely, qualified or unqualified. That's a special, and that's why we know that we are on track. Especially unqualified. Lord <laughs> <laughs> Nityananda. Just if just, you have, a few, you have minutes, a few minutes. I had a friend, had a friend in, friend. in Israel. He was a, a Kabbalah rabbi. And I was telling him about Lord Chaitanya and how he, you know, broke it open to give everybody. And that the Kabbalah... That's their thing. That's, that's why the Jews don't like them. Because they have the same teachings, but they say give it to everybody. And the other Jews did. So he was, then he said, when did that happen? And when was Lord Chaitanya? So I told him, and he went, wow. You know, it was the same time as this Kabbalah guy came out with give it to everybody. <laughs> it just blew his mind, like... <laughs> He was really interested. <laughs> he wanted to know more and more about Lord Chaitanya. I took him to, in L.A., he, was, he moved, and I took him to the Bhagavad Gita Museum, him and his wife. So they were really fascinated. And the last exhibit is the big Rasa dance. You know? And I was thinking, oh, my God, I don't know how this one's going to go over with them. You know? <laughs> and... They came out and they said, wow, this was fantastic. This is great. You know, we should do something like this. Can I bring my kids here? Can, you know, <laughs> so, you know, it's for everybody. But Lord Chaitanya broke it open. Krishna said, surrender to me, but nobody really knew how to do it. Very few people. But that was just the timing. And the time when someone asked Prabhupada, why didn't you come earlier? He said, you weren't ready. You know, he came obviously at the exact right time, any of us who were around and anyone who studied a little American history, you know, it was perfect timing when Prabhupada came, you know. If he would have come five or ten years earlier, he would have got a few people. And if he would have waited, it's like the fruit, you know, if you pick it too early, you can't really eat it. And if you leave it too long, it becomes rotten. So he came at exactly the right time and with exactly the right style, you know. It was such, a, such an amazing, perfect arrangement. Just a simple old man, you know, so unobtrusive and nice and never pushing anybody, just giving it everything. So that now we, he set everything up for us. We have Hare Krishna's famous, you know, Especially in India, you know, ISKCON is even famous and established so that this, that, that devotee in America, he, he broke his record again. He sold 30 Bhagavatam sets on the street in Atlanta, Georgia. <laughs> 30 sets, you know, that's like $350 or something, you know. So it just... Uh, we, st we were considered heroes to sell 30 books, you know, so, but that's times changing. And now and more and more people are giving their life and coming to Vrindavan, you know, so thank you very much. And please, everybody take it up. Agya, you know, Tare Yare Deki, Tare Deki, Krishna Upadesh. Wherever you go and whoever you meet, tell them about Krishna. Simple. Then you become a guru, a teacher. 
Shrimad Bhagavatam ki jai. Shishi Krishna Balaram ki jai. And all these superheroes here, Prithu and Chudi, I don't know if you know their heroic histories. Everybody should know. Hare Krishna.